Hi, good morning. So today we have got uh, Vidush here, who's got uh, almost close to uh, 18 years of experience, and uh, he's been on the database side of things and uh, wants to grow on the career ladder uh, into more uh, uh, senior roles. So yes, welcome, Vidush. So I think uh, just let us know what you've done uh, right from the start as to what your responsibilities have been and what your current career challenges are, and how do you want to take it from here. to get into you know uh, higher and senior roles yeah hi kiran uh, this is vidush like uh, i started my career as a database uh, programmer like uh, mostly in, in uh, SQL, having uh, experience with sql server background and uh, i mean uh, initially that's an uh, erp product i work for um, <clears throat> uh, using uh, mostly into development of uh, using stored uh, so uh, sql server only so that is what uh, worked on after that i moved into another um, a banking company and uh, there uh, mostly i got uh, to work with um, the etl uh, uh, side of uh, let's say etl side of um, uh, uh, microsoft uh, uh, products so there also mostly it was development with respect to uh, the sql server and the addition of etl packages and uh, i currently like another i'm working for another uh, wealth uh, management uh, based uh, financial uh, company so there <clears throat> that is my current responsibilities like include uh, development of both uh, i mean uh, 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 let's say uh using sql server mostly and uh, here i think uh, in this current role like i got exposure to other databases also like oracle like uh, that's mostly for analysis purpose and uh, here uh, i mean using uh, sql server like uh, we have created custom uh, batch processing uh, frameworks uh, that we use to ingest uh, large uh, loads of data and apart from that like uh, here in this company like i was able to work on uh, batch pipelines especially big data batch uh, big data batch pipelines using uh, hadoop framework like uh, uh, i got exposure to that so once that is done like uh, <clears throat> part of uh, a modernization project like uh, we migrated uh, to recently cloud and uh, i'm aware of uh, how all the cloud uh, stuff works like i mean at a high level like how the cloud is integrated like uh, not completely hands on with respect to that but uh, we know like how cloud then apart from that like i have uh, uh, not fully worked but uh, i have worked in uh, uh, let's say cloud data warehouses like uh, snowflake also like we have worked on it and apart from that i'm familiar with uh, kind of the uh, data management concepts and data governance and uh, it's related to like uh, Colibra and uh, all those tools that I work for. So currently, like uh, like I said, like I have vast experience with respect to database development and all those things, and I need to also, I mean, batch pipelines using uh, big data technologies. Like I need to move into space. Like uh, I have worked in uh, let's say data engineering kind of not full fledged data engineering, but like we worked on uh, certain pieces of data engineering uh, parts. Like uh, how you define, but it is very limited with respect to the architectures that are done. It's kind of limited because it's a standard architecture that we know. It's not like uh, in a service company you have multiple product. I mean uh, clients, right? Like there the architecture. Uh, I think it varies, right? Depends on the domain and all those things. But uh, here in my uh, uh, the projects that I work with, the architecture is pretty much standard. Like uh, even the migration now with respect to that, it was very easy. Like it was basically a lift and shift uh, into cloud. So there is not much uh, from a development standpoint or anything that you can control. It yet still it is fine. So I want to move into mainly the data engineering uh, part of it. I mean, uh, with respect to uh, let's say it's let it be on cloud uh, or want to move into multi-cloud concept, and also like uh, with the level of experience, I also want to uh, provide my contributions as a data architect. Like currently, it is like data base level architect I'm performing, but I want to move into more of a data architect layer where you will cover where your scope grows ultimately, and you can contribute towards the enterprise data architect. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's basically the expectation. Yeah, how to transition from a senior, uh, I mean, uh, uh, from a, coming from a database background into how you can move into like a data architect kind of role or a principal software uh, engineer role. Yeah, actually, I think uh, that makes sense. Uh, so, have you worked mostly on uh, the database? Uh, yeah, correct. Database mm -hmm. development. You worked on database optimization. Correct. Data, data modeling. Data modeling. Yeah. Performance management, database performance management. Database, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, have you also worked on database scaling and things like that? Like, you know, scale database to large number of users, concurrent users and things like that. Uh, we have worked, uh, you're referring to database sharding, right? Database yes. scal- uh, scalability. Yeah, database, uh, we haven't implemented database sharding, but we have implemented database partitioning so that uh, significantly improved the performances. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I think it would be, make sense to uh, be aware of those things. And what about your experience with uh, kind of you no know, SQL databases uh, to mm-hmm. scale up to, you know, to scale out to large number of users? Uh, because mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. One is like your experience with transactional databases, wherein, uh, you know, the regular uh, relational uh, database kind of a thing. The other would be the NoSQL non-relational things, wherein, uh, you know, you have actually used blob blob or, uh, you know, the JSON kind of uh, data. Correct. Yeah. Pretty much we processed all kind of data, like how you do it, right? Like, for example, JSON or XML, everything like we have processed using backend technology itself. Yeah. So you, have you, you scaled out to large large database uh, uh, concurrent users using those kind of, so what is the maximum number of users that you actually cater to on a database which has actually scaled out like that? Let's say like, uh, for example, like, um, uh, uh, like number of uh, current tra- transactions you're asking, like, uh, like a, for a minute, let's say like that could be 150 users yeah, at any given moment. Yeah. And what do we yeah. do? Yeah. What is the millisecond response request response time? Uh, request response is less than three seconds. Okay, and was it a no, a no SQL database? No, it's a see uh, this one relational database only. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. I think that's one part of it. So you yeah. might have to branch yourself to some no SQL exposure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. because uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so correct, correct. Actually, have a limitation in terms of you're trying to scale. You might reach a hit a limit. You might have to throw more hardware at it. You might have to do a lot of load balancing and all that and do a lot of sharding to scale out to a large number of users. But okay. uh, you should also be aware of concepts like acid transactions and base transactions when you actually okay. do that. So base is like eventual consistency, right? Over a period mm-hmm. of time. You don't mm-hmm. have to be consistent. Uh, like if it's a relational database, the amount or the uh, account field has to be updated with the balance uh, right mm-hmm. away. But uh, if it is uh, eventual consistency, like they use it in LinkedIn or Facebook and Instagram and all that. So you comment on a post, probably it appears after five, 10 minutes uh, and it doesn't immediately show up in the feed, you know? So Mm -hmm. it is like a lazy uh, write or something like that on that. And then it's eventually consistent. So you need to actually brace yourself to these kind of concepts. And also uh, I think, are you aware of CAPS theorem and all that? Yeah. Like yeah, 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 cap, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, yeah, exactly. So you need to be aware of how do you use Cap Theorem in terms of uh, you know sc- scaling it to large number of users that you need to compromise either availability or partitioning, partition, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, consistency between these three things. You need to you know work out uh, what is the best balance that you can actually uh, mm-hmm. get. So those kind of strategies will help. And the other one would be like somebody would really ask you, what would be uh, one design or architecture challenge that you actually faced in your uh, job uh, that you can actually substantiate as the major design goal or architecture goal that you actually done as a part of your architecture and uh, how did that help you know scale to max um, large number of users or how did it solve some complicated uh, problem on the database side of things uh, so you need to keep at that storytelling you know, okay with you the architectural it, challenge that you refer to like yeah. uh, how will uh let's say uh, the architecture channel like basically before even you start a project you have to defend the architecture right so when i expect this question right like what will be it like uh, at what phase we have a challenge uh face the challenge like will it be before the start of development or let's say uh you have developed your product and ultimately during some performance testing and all these things you kind of figure out that uh, it is not working problem like uh how do you i mean how does that question come like will it be at the start of the pro- because at the start of the project you will not know right like also uh once you completed everything and once it, if it comes in the performance testing stage like uh, uh how will you a- able to answer that question yeah, so because that is like you have to change the whole uh, thing backwards, right? So yeah, you have to find out and be prepared for storytelling instances from your side, uh, which will tell you how exactly you navigated some complex challenge in your architecture or your design. So it might be something that you have done, uh, but you may not have done it fully. But still, if you are aware of how yeah. to explain it 
and uh, uh, know the intricacies of what that means. So you should be prepared for such stories and uh, for such design and architecture challenges in your you know architecture and be ready to explain them end to end. And then then that gives a feel to the interviewer that okay, this guy can handle complex tasks and he'll be able to lead you know such initiatives convincingly and uh, so so that uh, what I'll help you to coach and mentor is to create one or two or three or four such instances wherein you actually involved deeply into the design and architecture and have figured out something that uh, typically was a challenge yeah, like you know uh, let us say it was a distributed cache, cache scenario and then you're supposed to cache some database records in memory and then uh, process that <clears throat> and while you're processing probably uh, the token that were used to fetch from the key value pair in the cache was has to be a unique one and then how do you replicate that uniqueness across multiple shared instances of the application and then in case there's a failover how do you balance so, so like just prepare work on some uh, use case i'm sure there will be plenty of them in any architecture so just a lot of work on them and then be ready uh, as to what your contribution in that area was and how did you circumvent such issues and be prepared to explain them so that will give the confidence to the you know, interviewer saying that, okay, this guy has, he knows what he talks about and he is aware of all of these things and uh, pretty much. Uh, so it could be even a normalization uh, thing that you actually done. How do you optimize the database and uh, how, how did that speed up queries? How did that speed up uh, joins, for instance? And how do you do application response time measurement in the database layer once it hits the database? Where was it taking the maximum amount of space? How do you optimize the table spaces? How do you optimize it across multiple nodes? How do you do database recovery or data sync operations? Or uh, you know, things like how do you do a data transfer from one to another, like the fallback, active, passive, passive, active, you know, all of them. So there could be multiple of those things. So you have to pick so one or two of them, which you, it resonates with you, which you actually contributed and uh, you know, be ready to explain that. So that's one aspect of it, which will actually put you in a good position uh, in terms of uh, what are the key design challenges that you have done. And uh, also the fact that, okay, you should be knowing a little bit about your data security aspects, because these days a lot of people ask about how well are you securing your data? So uh, the cybersecurity aspect to data handling uh, should be well aware in the entire life cycle of things. And, uh, also data governance and data compliance and regulation kind of activities. So uh, if they ask you, okay, what's your exposure to compliance on the data or the data governance? Uh, what what are you going to go on? Explain me what are data lifecycle activities that you have taken place? So you should have an answer on that. Uh, so I'm just asking you of the uh, uh, typically, what would be your exposure to compliance related activities? And uh, can you highlight some of the activities that you Yeah, have? some of the compliance like that. Uh, probably happens in the uh, data governance would be the GDPR, right? Like wherein like you will have to uh, uh, see MNPA information, you should uh, you should be able to tell like which levels can have access to these MNPA data. For example, in test beds and all those regions, like you should be masking those information. So those kinds of things. And uh, part of data governance, like you need to, uh, uh, for example, like you have those roles, right? Right, like R back and A back. So you need to define like which users or uh, which set of users should be able to access. For example, a business user would need to access to view the data, whereas a technical user should not be actually uh, looking at the data. And also, when you move data from, let's say, one region to another, like you have to ensure that all those masking uh, methodologies are all followed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So basically, PCI DSS or GDPR. Uh, what kind of work you have done in the architecture and how has it helped clients uh, safeguard their privacy. So you should be kind of ready on those aspects and also be aware of the business side of things when it comes to uh, the data. Vidish, have I lost you? Yeah, I think, uh, fine, please go ahead. Yeah, you are basically asking about the data security, right? Yeah, you are basically asking about the data security and what is the thing? Like currently, I think uh, with respect to data security, I think compliance, basically you need to other with the GDPR compliance, right? Like, which is basically MNP information, how you are handling MNP information, how you are archiving your data, like what is the uh, uh, 
timeline that you have with respect to data archival like uh, how much uh, years of data that you are basically consuming and also with respect to roles and who can for example uh, let's say like you have um, Uh, you have to define roles right for example you have in data governors r back and a back like uh, you are giving you uh, which user should be able to see which information and also <clears throat> uh, with respect to that roles like basically like all the mnp information that you are uh, having in your uh, uh, relational system like how you are using your masking methodology for example mnp information uh, like names and all like uh, it should be available in anything right like you should mask all the information so those kinds of things yeah i'm yeah i'm aware <laughs> yeah so i think what you need to mix here is your knowledge with the business so uh, you should be aware of what are the domain aspects in your line of business so if you are somebody as what domain have you worked uh, for these um, database experience so what would be your key domains like banking or insurance or yeah, banking it's banking okay uh, yeah banking in yeah. banking private banking or uh, investment banking basically investment banking okay that yeah. that's good uh, so again they'll ask you whether it's corporate banking retail banking investment banking yeah wealth management so wealth management okay so you should be aware of uh, the uh, regulations in that mm, thing like if you have any dot frank regulations if you have any uh, sox compliance issues so it would be good to know as a data architect also about uh, the governance aspects of it about the legal aspects of the data that you are actually handling so that puts you in a very matured uh, you know professional who is um, aware of the business side of things so as you grow up uh, in your uh, career and stage up people expect you to know the business side of things also uh, quite well you know uh, so you you should be kind of reading upon uh, the domain aspects of the data legislations and uh, gdpr uh, privacy uh, issues what would be the implications of not meeting this requirement 